So President Obama is making a rather large step in uh, fighting, of course, against mass incarceration. Uh, and he is moving to commute nonviolent drug sentences to try to reduce the levels of incarceration for, for example, uh, drug crimes, things like possession of marijuana. Now, uh, he's expected to commute a total of 80 people soon when it comes to drug crimes. Now, uh, to kind of give you a comparison here, He's going to commute 80 sentences. However, 30,000 prisoners had applied for clemency. However, uh, according to an article in the, um, I believe it was in The Hill, it's a part of a broader move to correct what many agree to be a national pattern of gross over-sentencing. Now, he's been making some moves recently and talking recently about trying to commute sentences and trying to sort of reform our justice system. And we've actually been hearing that from different presidential candidates. We've been hearing that from uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders as well on this because we have too many people in prison for sentences that are nonviolent in nature. Uh, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, the United States is the world's largest jailer with 5% of the world's population, but it has 25% of the world's prison population. And since 1970, this is going to blow your mind, uh, the U.S. prison population has risen 700%. And a lot of that is attributed to, of course, the war on drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that can all that can be traced back to Nixon, you know, when he wanted to get reelected and stuff like that. So they, they started the, this, quote, war on drugs. Well, and remember the Schaefer report? Mm -hmm. He saw that and, and he just he ripped it right up. He's like, nope. Yeah. Well, I think finally that, you know, and, and I'm glad Obama's doing this because I, mm -hmm. I think finally politicians on the mass level are slowly starting to realize that, A, you know, the drug war I is a failed concept. B, uh, just the very nature of our prison system I is very tragically flawed. Like, like I, I know at one point in the article that, that we've been looking at, it refers to this whole prison thing as a, quote, crisis. It's not a crisis as much as it's just basic corruption 101. We have a for-profit prison uh, prison industry in this country, which means we create a demand for prisoners. Like, like it's not just, okay, we have to enforce justice, so there's going to be prisoners. It's, we need people in these jails. So it's a very tragically flawed uh, and corrupt system. And I think that recognizing the failure of the drug war is important in uh, moving forward to correcting that. But, you know, until we kind of overhaul the system that we have, I, I don't think a whole lot's going to change. But it's good at least, you know, the president's doing something. Right. And, and you know, what we're looking at, too, uh, there's a recent report uh, on the criminal justice system, to go to your point, and it's found that, look, the reasons that we put people away is to try and Rebuilt, rehabilitate them, which is ridiculous, right? It's no longer effective in uh, reducing crime or rebuil, rehabilitating inmates. Um, and this is, uh, look, we, we started doing this in order to be tough on crime, right? Yeah, we lock people away. Uh, okay, so so the whole rationale for, for the war on drugs is that we're going to uh, try to prevent you from ruining your life by criminalizing drugs so that you don't ruin your life. But what it really turned into is we're going to ruin your life to prevent you from ruining your life by locking you away. It makes no sense to me, and it makes no sense, and it doesn't work, especially according to this report by the Congressional Research Service. Uh, it, and, and also, it says that mass, uh, mass incarceration has, quote, reached the point of diminishing returns. I think we had reached the point a long time ago with diminishing returns. Yeah, and, and you know what, Jeff, I, I know that on paper that's a, a lot of what we we're fed in regards to the drug war and what have you, but I, I think that whole concept uh, was a bit more sinister. I, I think a lot of it had to do with Nixon trying to, to get more votes, trying to get uh, low-level offenders in prison uh, so that they couldn't vote. I, I think a lot of it had to do with the profit center prison industry that we have. I, I don't think that there was altruistic intent behind the drug war. I don't for one second. And maybe that's a big conspiratorial, but, you know, there's a lot of uh, evidence out there that supports that. No, that's a good point. 
I'm just saying that that's that that's what the general that's what most people have been told. Most people have been fed that we're just trying to protect people mm-hmm. from from doing drugs. We're just looking out for you. We're looking out for your best interest. But what they actually did is built a, an entire industry built around human suffering and incarceration. Mm-hmm. And anytime you build an industry around that, it's really really hard to dislodge that industry. Uh, but luckily, we do have some unlikely allies in trying to dislodge this system. I mean, for one, it's great that President Obama is pardoning, you know, uh, or commuting, sorry, 80 people. Um, we wish he would do more because there's plenty of nonviolent drug offenders there. And, of course, you want to be careful who you let out. And uh, that's part of why it is taking so long is that they have really have to look at it on a case-by-case basis and what you did, how you did it, you know, and uh, what's involved in your case. But nonetheless, it, it is progress. It's slow progress, but it's progress. It's, it's classic Obama progress. Well, I, I think it's, it's also kind of, you know, I mean, all presidents do that thing where, where they pardon certain people and stuff like that. And, it, and I think to some degree, you kind of make a statement. And I think the statement Obama's uh, making here is he's recognizing the, um, you know, the overreach and, and the extreme reach of how we treat uh you know low level drug offenders and stuff like that and, and i think that'll open the bigger conversation of how our drug policy is completely out of date and and you know states are beginning to recognize that with the legalized you know legalization of marijuana and so forth so uh you know i i, I think it is setting a good example also um uh, on your point about you know uh, what you had mentioned i i, I lost my point actually um Oh, pardon. It happens to the best. Sorry, time. no, commuting. Uh, President Obama had actually started commuting more sentences uh, than a lot of recent presidents. And it's, it's, a, it's you know, he's actually been doing more than other presidents before him. And uh, mm-hmm. it's it's been a little bit, from the article that I read, some presidents have been a little tepid, especially after uh, the whole Willie Horton thing, uh, which Dukakis got nailed to the wall over. If you can remember that ad, um, the Will- the famous Willie Horton ad, but they released somebody who was, uh, I believe, a rapist and a murderer uh, had been pardoned. And, and then, then the he- person struck again, right? And he struck again. That's yeah. right. And Because uh, that's the biggest fear every president has. Obama himself actually right, mentioned right. that on the Mark Maron interview. Absolutely. So it does make sense why he is going slowly on this. So... But yeah. as I said, nonetheless, progress. Now, I mentioned unlikely allies in this, right? Uh, now, and this is interesting, uh, the Center for American Progress, we know it's an advocacy organization, uh, a more on the liberal side, has teamed up with Coke Industries in order to, of course, um, to press for reducing prison population and kind of overhauling sentencing. So it's like working with the Koch brothers, which is like, you wouldn't want to work for the, with the Koch brothers, but they're yeah, actually... Yeah, just hearing it, I feel like yeah, I need yeah, a shower. Yeah, you, you feel kind of dirty, but then you think about it, they're like, Ugh, they're, they're kind of, they're doing the right thing, and they want to overhaul the justice system. So, you know, that's good. I mean, if you're going to do the right thing, and somebody else, even on the wrong side, um, or the other side, I should say, wants to team up and help you do it, and there isn't any ulterior motives. Yeah, are you sure okay. about that second part there? Well, I, from what I can see, I, I don't know what they would gain from reforming the, the private prison industry. Right, well, I don't either, but I, I, I feel like with them, there's gotta be something. Like, like you know I what know. I mean? Like, like I'm not, I, I just don't see why they would do anything, you know, out of the goodness of their hearts. Since I don't they know. they haven't yet. <laughs> well, uh, then again, you know, like, I don't think uh, they're evil people, right? But I do think a lot of their decisions or most of their decisions are based on money, on how much more money can we squeeze out of the system, right? Right. I I think they're businessmen. Uh, You know, whether they're evil or not, never met them, don't know. But I I think they're businessmen and, you know, they usually don't care about Mm -hmm. the cyclical effects of what they do. And and I think it's because they're just so wealthy that they have no point of reference Mm -hmm. to the general person. Uh, so, oh, I mean, yeah, I'd be curious why they would be concerned about the for-profit prison industry unless they had 
one of their own up there. So I, I don't know if that's the case or not, but yeah, it's yeah. weird to me. It, it, you know, it's all speculation, but uh, perhaps, I mean, we know that part of their, their ideology is, is more of the faux libertarianism, I guess, uh, the privatization and the reduction of government, right? Perhaps they see the federal prison, um, which that's what houses most of these people, 1.5 million people are locked up in federal prison over the war on drugs. Maybe they're like, well, we don't want the federal government getting involved in, in, in pri imprisoning people. So that's why we're against this. So it would be an ide ideological point that's actually lines up with, I think, you and I, where we don't think that the federal government should be locking up at least people for nonviolent drug offenses. Mm -hmm. So, you know. That's my take on the whole thing.